Hey all, and welcome to my third review of a digital audio player. This is the OWN M1S. My last two reviews of were of the Fio X1 and the Abasso DX80. So this is similarly priced to the Abasso, but I think it's around $200 to $250. I'm not sure exactly what price it is, but it should be around that region. So this is a very uh, thin experience, very uh, quick experience compared to the Abasso. Uh, some features are lacking, but other features are there. I will get into that in a second, but let's first go into how it looks. This is basically how it looks. It looks like an old iPod. One of the thinner iPods, maybe an iPod Nano. I'm not sure exactly. You see this this wheel thing? Do not expect that to be an actual like wheel. This does not rotate. It doesn't do anything of the sort. Just forward, back buttons, and the middle button. And it's very light on the buttons actually you've got a back button right here you have the home button and then on the side you have the volume down volume up and the power button and on the left side you have nothing so you have one slot for a micro sd card just one not two like the abasso but just one slot and if you want to use a micro sd card on this i have a 32 gigabyte one right now you need to format it in xfat or FAT32, so this does not support NTFS. So keep that in mind. I've been using NTFS with my Basso, and I, ca if I, I can't use that with this. So I have to get a separate card for this. On the bottom, you have the space for the charger and the USB connector right there. And then you have two of these, right? Now, the funny thing about, well, not the funny thing, the interesting thing about this compared to the Basso was, on the Abasso, on the bottom, you had two slots just like this, but one was for pure line out and one was for the phone out. In this case, you have two phone outs and two line outs because the setting is done inside the settings uh, digitally. You don't, you, there's no separate slot for line out and phone out. You have to toggle them. So basically, on this, you have this is the 3.5 millimeter phone out slash line out jack. But then what's this? And it's a little th smaller if you can see. Well, this is a 2.5 millimeter TRS balance output. This is the first DAP I've owned which has a balance output. And for this, I've been using it with a Monk uh, Espresso, which is also balanced, terminated in 2.5. So, but mostly if you just want to use it as a normal player, you can utilize that 3.5 millimeter output. So that's how it looks from the outside, and yeah, it's pretty plain experience, pretty basic. Let's kick it up. There we go. All right, let's go to the last song I played, which is a Michael Jackson song. So the first thing you need to know about the interface on this thing is that it's very, very fast, especially compared to the Abasso. The interface on this thing, it just zips through everything. Like... You can suck songs very fast on this. But you have to keep one thing in mind, is that the reason that probably is, and keep in mind this is iteration, uh, patch, whatever, version, 1.03. Now this is supposedly the, the, the latest one, so I don't think they're going to change it, because I've had this since patch, whatever, 1.01. 1 .01. So I don't think they're going to change this. What they're not going to change, in my opinion, is how this thing navigates. So you can see, you can find it through folders. Now these are all actual folders I made in Windows with the songs inside and like video game soundtracks, right? Then you can just go further in and just like that. These are the actual files. So you can arrange it like that. It's not too bad if you have a 32 gigabyte card like I do, but if you have, if you want to arrange things by artists, if you want to like find things by album name, you're not going to be able to do that on this. There's just no way. So, okay, you can also do it by songs. If you're doing it by songs, you'll have it like arranged according to the song title. So, of course, if this is 01 at the beginning, it's going to be very first on the list. So right now, I'm just going through all the songs. You can see it's going really fast. You can stack songs really fast like this. But if you, I, I can't imagine anyone actually wanting to use it, the song thing, because you can... It's all random and you can't really go through it like you can go through it fast, but you can't really find what you want to go through. So you should definitely just use the folder option. 
I would have liked to see it being arranged by artists, album and all that, but it's not the case. You can do it by playlists, most played and favorites. So these are my most played songs apparently, a bunch of Michael Jackson songs. And then you have, you go back by folders. Now, here's the, th let's go to settings. Here's the thing. First of all, you've got the play mode, which is by folder. And this is, I think you just plays the same song once. There's a shuffle mode, a single repeat and back to folder. Folder is what I choose, obviously. Startup autoplay, I really hate that. Like, I don't want this to start playing as soon as I turn it on. I might nearly do it myself. Filter mode fast. Now, I haven't really heard many differences in this, but supposedly they are, supposedly there's supposed to be some differences in like the bass and how warm the sound can be overall. You can have it on slow, MP, and fast. I keep it on fast usually. The brightness, I have it on full for the sake of this video. Usually I have it on one. Auto power off. I have it on off right now, but you can have it on half an hour, one hour, one and a half hours, two hours, two and a half hours, three hours, three and a half hours, four hours, four and a half hours, five hours, and then off. So five hours is the cutoff, guys. I'll put that on zero, uh, 0 0.5 hours right now. Auto lock time, 30 seconds. You can have it on, on or five seconds, 10 seconds, 15, 30, I'll keep it on 30. Gapless play, uh, playback on. Gain on high. You can have it on middle and low. I'd rather they change that to medium, but yeah. Uh, gain, middle, low, and high. I'll keep it on high. Language, English, I'm not going to mess with that. Now, this is the thing you have to be careful of and the thing you need to use if you're going to use this with an amplifier. If you want to line out, use a line out through any one of these two slots. Now, it says pull out the earphones when you try to switch it. I'm going to go back and say no. If you wanted to go to line out, you have to switch it through this. Make sure you are not listening to whatever is plugged into the phone out or it will obliterate your air, your airs. Just trust me on that. Factory data reset if you want to erase all the stuff on your on the <clears throat> on the SD card. System upgrade. Now this is what you will need if you like I've upgraded this a few times from the earlier versions. Uh, if you put the update.dat file on the SD card and then you just press this and it will like update the system. And it updates quite fast actually. Like way faster than I'm, what I'm used to with these audio players. Update playlist. Now if you put more songs in your SD card, you have to do update playlist. And for it, what it's worth, like I'll just try and show you, it updates the playlist quite fast. This is, this is especially fast compared to my Boss of the X80, which takes a while. And then it has two to do as well. And even if you do it, you can do it separately on that, but this is way faster. It takes you back to what the last song you were playing. So let me go back to settings. System info, okay, firmware 1.03, like I said, all rights reserved by own. Memory is 29.416, out of which I've used almost all of it. So I'm using a 32 gigabyte card, like I said, if you want to use a card on this, you have to format it in 32, uh, not 32, you have to format it in XFAT or FAT32. FAT32, you have to have the latest firmware for FAT32. Before then, it was just XFAT. Another thing you have to know, uh, know about this is that there is no onboard memory. So an SD card is absolutely vital. You can't get by without it. All right, so I think that was all of the settings. Yeah, and I'll show you the songs and the folders. And that's the entire interface, guys. So let's let's pull up a song right now. Let's go here. Let's pull up, let's say, Dr. Dre's song. Blah, blah, blah. What's the difference? Okay. So now this is playing in CD quality, right? I've paused it. You guys may very well notice there's no album art. It's not because I don't have album art, album art for this. It's because this DAP does not show album art. Maybe it's their way of making a leaner experience and make it faster to navigate. But like I said before with the album art, uh, album artist and all that arrangement stuff, some things have been left out. And in this case, there is no album art in this. So what I like about this, well, what I don't like, I don't like that there's no album art. I don't like that it doesn't arrange things through artists and albums and all that. Uh, I don't like that there's no SPDIF output 
which I quite like on my boss, so, but I'll get to that in a minute. And I don't like that you can't use NTFS. I don't like that either. What I do like, however, is the sound quality. Now, this utilizes a Sabre 9018 uh, V2 or Type 2 or something, which is the same uh, DAC chip that is used in my Zorlu Super DAC USB DAC, except this iteration of it sounds a lot more pleasing to the ears. It's not as harsh as that. It's not as glaring as that. But this is still quite... It's brighter than the Abasa DX80 for sure. Brighter than the X1 for sure. And the detail is... This is the most detailed DAC uh, DAP I have ever heard. I really enjoy listening to music on this because it gives me a leaner sound in terms of treble, which I can just... Comp I can just, you know, compensate with whatever I'm using. I can use warm earphones or warm, like, headphones. If I'm plugging this into, like, a portable amplifier, use it with a warm pair of headphones, that's just fine. This sounds just slightly north of neutral when it comes to the brightness level. But it's very detailed. I very much like the DAC tuning on this product. I like it. I actually like it more that owns S6 uh, DAC, which is more on the warmer side. The trouble's a little more rolled off. Uh, that's actually, very, that's like, that's a more comparable version to what the Abasa sounds like, which is also kind of uh, neutral-ish, but the trouble's a bit rolled off. This doesn't roll off the trouble so much. This gives you a very, very punchy dynamic sound compared to even their S6 full-size DAC. And I prefer this to that in terms of sound quality. So that's the tuning of this that I enjoy. Let's bring in the Abasso right now to talk about some differences. Now the Abasso is is more expensive. I don't enjoy the sound quality as much, but one thing that can't be denied with the Abasso is that this thing is chock full of features. You can use this as a digital transport very, very easily. First of all, you have a slot for two micro SD cards compared to one. You can format an NT NTFS compared to this, which you can't. Uh, this has a skin on it right now. I'm not gonna take it off. I'm just gonna leave it on. So another thing is that even though the even though the whole interface is quite sluggish compared to the Zippy and Fast Onem One S, you get quite a few more features in the Abasso. You can go up right like this. You can use it as a DAC. If you plug this into your computer with the USB, you can actually use this as your DAC. Uh, you, of course, you have digital filters, gain switch, and all that. I like those. I like that you can go here. You can arrange by artist. You can zip through your entire library. You can have two massive, massive uh, space-wise um, SD cards on this. You have this whole interface, which is quite sleek. Album art, like I said. And then you have all these different settings in... I'm not going to... I've already gone through this. I don't need to really bring up all that. But what I, the main things that I prefer this over that is a mini Toslink SPDIF output. This is a very useful thing to do if you want to connect the music that you have in your like in your DAP to a better uh, system which has a nicer full size DAP. Like if I want to connect this to my uh, shit Gungner multi bit and take advantage of the really nice DAC on that, I can do that so easily just by using a mini Toslink to a digital uh, optical SPDF connector. I can't do that with this though. The only output you can do with this is the analog output with um, using this with, uh, <clears throat> with the line out mode activated. And in this you have line out is its own special thing right here. And then you have phone out right here. So you have dedicated two switches. And then you have to understand this is only 3.5. So here's another advantage that the own has. This has a balanced 2.5 TRS um, output. The Abasso does not. But the Abasso is so chock full of features compared to the own M1S. But I have to admit, just for pure music listening, just for pure audio, I prefer the own M1S and I've been using this quite a bit over the Abasso. When I go out, if I go to my nearby store and I want to try out something, uh, I, like, I tried out the Stax L300 for example, and they had a little energizer. So I plugged, uh, using RCA to 3.5, uh, I plugged this into that and it sounded really nice. But, like I said, 
digital transport, this has more functionality, more space, and SPDIF. So this has some advantages over this. But if you don't care about those things, and if you want to save a bit of money, and all you care about is a rate dynamic sound, because I promise you, the basso sounds sluggish, and it sounds more muted and not as exciting, not as, pump up, not as pumped up as the own m one does with its Sabre DAC. I commend their DAC tuning. Their DAC tuning makes this entire thing for me. I don't care that I have to go through hoops and hurdles to select my song. Um, I don't care that there's no arrangement by artists so much. Because when I'm using this, I'm using a very really lean experience. It's thinner too. And you can just carry it around with you and you just use the phone out or the balanced phone out and you're set. It's just, in my opinion, a nicer sounding DAC. So those are the trade-offs you can get from the own M1S compared to the Ibasso DX80. Overall, would I recommend this item? Yes, I actually would. I must admit, out of the three things I've tried by own so far, this is probably my favorite thing they've made. So, you know, kudos to own for coming up with this DAC tuning and this form factor, this much of an uh, exciting sound characteristic that is a clear upgrade of your phone and a clear upgrade over my Zorlu Super DAC, which even though it's more detailed than this even, has more treble glare, more of that saber glare, which I don't enjoy so much. And this is a more natural laid back sound and more pleasing to the ears while still being very, very open and airy sounding and still very exciting, punchy and dynamic. So I recommend this if you are looking for an inexpensive DAP for just music listening. You don't want to have all the bells and whistles with SPDIF and all that. So I think I've covered all the bases. I'm trying to think of anything that I might have left out. I don't believe I have. Oh yeah, battery time really quick. I would say it's about, I've clocked it at about 9 to 10 hours using this. 9 to 10 hours compared to the Abasso, which I've clocked, which when I first got it, it was about 10 hours, but then it has gone down to 7 in about almost a year since I've had it. So keep that in mind. Own M1S wins in battery life performance in my opinion. So that was my review of the Own M1S. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.